Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Media Live from the News Hub. I am Portia Gabo. Coming up, the headlines. <music> Parents of children with Herb's palsy encouraged to seek early treatment as that is key to total recovery. <music> Drivers and commuters flying from Camp Road to Michelle Camp want the road fixed. On the foreign front, conservative candidate and ex-prison chief Alejandro Jametti, elected president of Guatemala. In our very first story, drivers and commuters plying the Thun Camp Road to Michelle Camp are concerned about its deplorable state. According to them, businesses in the area have been affected adversely due to the road's bad condition. Elizabeth Oswachum reports the road is riddled with potholes. Motorists who ply the Thun Camp Road say they are disappointed at government's inability to rehabilitate deteriorated roads in the area. Some drivers who spoke to the news team claimed most of the roads constructed in the early 60s have not received any first lift. The road is extremely bad and it's affecting my car parts. The same road the road has damaged my car parts. We use our daily sales to repair broken parts of the vehicle. Due to the poor state of the road, drivers have to exercise extreme caution to prevent their vehicles from being damaged. An hour's journey now makes more than two hours. The driver says several complaints to the Pun Katamansu Municipal Assembly have not yielded any positive result. I've been living in this area for more than four years. I don't understand. I don't know who had this contract to do this road. This road has been really bad for four years or and even more than four years. This road is also a bypass to, to, to dodge the, the traffic on the Afienya Road. They use this road and, and join the Michel Camp 1. So I don't understand why they can't just do this road. The road has been like this for a very long time. Several complaints to authority have not yielded any results. They want the assembly to fix the road urgently. In other news, her quest for survival and extra income pushed her into starting her own business even as a student. Nuan Falon tells the story of a final year law student at the University of Ghana who has braced all the odds to make a living while in school. Rachel started her business when she was in second year. She would buy the bonnets from someone else and sell for a percentage of the profit. Initially, her aim was to make supplementary income. Soon, the business became popular among her friends. And to avoid hiking the prices for a decent profit, she started making her own bonnets. Although some colleagues told her selling bonnets is an unconventional business path for a law student, her love for natural hair helped her overcome the challenges. Rachel says she has had a lot of support and encouragement from family. Some friends help her package and model the product to cut down her production costs. It started when I cut my hair in 2017. Initially, when I started, the profit margin was okay. If you're a student, that's fine. Little money to tide you over. And it's bonnets. It's not supposed to be too expensive. So I, I, I started making mine. She explains she chose to use satin due to the protective advantages of the fabric. Satin is such that it doesn't absorb moisture from your hair and anyone with kinky hair, a kind of hair, knows that moisture is a, is a struggle to keep moisture in your hair. It will either dry up too fast or it will soak up your hair. So you want something that will maintain the moisture in your hair at an optimum level. Satin does just that. Over the years, there has been a steady global African women's drive that has encouraged natural methods of hair care. Ghana, in particular, has been a leading proponent of the movement. 
Rachel intends to continue selling bonnets even after school as she hopes to expand the business to meet the changing needs of clients by adopting environmentally sustainable packaging. Private legal practitioner Kwame Pokubwa has called on Ghanaians not to throw away their traditional values in the name of foreign cultures. He was speaking at a social democracy program in Accra. Making reference to the 2016 general election, Kwame Opokubwa was at a loss over the sudden silence from the peace breaches soon after the elections. For those of us who followed the 2016 electionary campaign would attest to the fact that many organizations, both local and international, encourage Ghanaians to embrace a conflict-free election now that the election is over. We hardly see or hear people preaching about peace. Within this period, we have allowed the devil to take control and is using our airwaves irresponsibly. The private legal practitioner welcomed the Watch Your Tank initiative by Sergeant Daniel Kwesio Foyapia. The official launching of this program could not have come at a better time at this moment. A time when our airwaves and television stations are saturated with messages, commentaries and actions on characteristics of a Ghanaian. The peace we enjoy today, of which we pride ourselves, is not by chance, but it has its roots in our culture as a people with a common destiny. It is sad to say that today we have abandoned some of our good values, such as the courtesies that we extend to our neighbors. Kwame Opokubwa linked the growing moral breakdown to the influence of foreign cultures. We are blindly copying the Western world. And we think that you can just stand before your father and say, stupid, and it's all right. Because you saw a white man or a small boy telling the father, you are stupid, and that was okay with the father. But we have our own values as Ghanaians and Africans. And we've got to go back to our values if we want to sustain the peace that we have. We must all be circumspect in the choice of our words, in our speech, what we write, and what we do as citizens of this country. He tags the media to ensure it performs its role as the fourth estate of the realm. As communicators, what comes to your mind before you disseminate information? Is the information meant to correct a wrong or to destroy or to castigate your friend or to render him useless? If we are privileged to have access to the airwaves, we have to use it responsibly. And we can only do this when we think right, when we speak right, and when we act right, we should endeavor to tame our tongue, even though it is difficult. Founder and initiator of Watch Your Tongue campaign, Sergeant Daniel Kwesio Foriapia assured the campaign would be sustained to ensure a change in attitudes. Our focus is not only on elections, but our daily activities. We will all be educating the populace on the need to write right, act right, and speak pleasant words in our homes, in the communities, in churches, in schools, during political activities, in business and training, so that together we will have a safe world. Let's now focus on our sanitation campaign. Whereas most lorry terminals in Accra are grappling with waste management challenges and vehicular and human congestion, the situation at the Achimota News Station here in Accra is different. Management at the facility, Kwaje Limited, attributes the situation to the banning of trading activities. The 800 capacity terminal was inaugurated in 2009 to decongest some major terminals in Accra and also serve as a transit point for long distance buses. It is currently managed by a private company. The surroundings at the terminal are clean with beautiful landscaping, a clear departure from littering, filth, and uncollected waste at most bus terminals in Accra. 
trading and hawking are not allowed inside the facility. All such business activities are conducted at the entrance. Hence, the situation where hawkers and traders compete for space to sell their wares is absent. Management at the facility spoke about other measures put in place to maintain the place. The one that the contract was given to us, we started by educating the drivers' union, the drivers themselves, the mates, the sellers, that's those who are operating canteens here. We educate them that we don't want to keep the place very dirty. We have cleaners who make sure that they tidy up the place periodically. Over 80% of the traveling public in cities use some form of public transport. City authorities and key stakeholders must hence act to tackle waste management challenges at various transport and lorry stations in the country. Away from sanitation, head of the Addictive Diseases Unit at the Kolobu Teaching Hospital, Longosu Amegashi, has cautioned government not to bow to any pressure to decriminalize marijuana use in the country. Speaking to TV3, he argued that it will increase the rate of drug addiction in the country. Statistics from the Behavioral Health Statistics and Quality shows drug use among young people between the ages of 12 and 17 is on the rise. Currently, about 70% of the inmates at the psychiatric hospitals in Ghana fall within this age bracket. And the narcotic blood control statistics also show that the youth from Chinia and the senior high schools and tertiary institutions make up the majority. Despite all this, the campaign to get marijuana legalized is gradually gaining momentum as many Ghanaians and foreigners are mounting pressure on government. Head of Addictive Disease Unit at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Logo Suamegashi, believes government will regret if it bows to the pressure. We are aware of the statistics in the psychiatric hospitals, and the authorities there tell us about cannabis-induced psychosis. Are they saying that our nurses and doctors who have worked over the years in these institutions and have seen cases visit, go, and come, they come to treatment, they don't have access to cannabis, and they are stable, they go back to their environments, go back to their workplaces, and they perform it very well until they touch the cannabis. Liver failure, stroke, mental confusion, brain damage, lung disease, and memory problems are some of the adverse effects of drug abuse. Logo Swamegashi observed that the institutions that will deal with these complications are not there. If there is a way that these other ones could are not like marijuana is not criminalized. None of us is saying that people using substances should be criminalized. We are just cautioning that the institutions that will deal with the complications are not in place for now. He indicated that there's no economic benefit in substance sale as portrayed by many. What are the damages that are done to the environment of mining areas? And what are the compensations of those people? But in this particular case, whether the cost of trading in marijuana or cannabis will be 10 times more than all the mineral resources of this country put together. Are we looking at the collateral damage? How much would be 1 billion Ghana cities if I lost my son in medical to school marijuana who is got psychotic and is irreversible? Parents of children with Ebb's palsy have been encouraged to seek early treatment as that is key to total recovery. Most parents shy away from professional intervention causing more damage to the children. Esi Benoa Otu was at the physiotherapy unit of the Princess Marie Louis Children's Hospital in Accra and has more. Ebb's palsy occurs when the collection of the nerves around the shoulder are damaged during a difficult delivery. During the birth process, an infant's shoulder may be caught behind the mother's pubic bone and must be pulled out. However, physically pulling out the baby during delivery can stretch or tear the nerves in their shoulder. When this happens, the baby cannot properly use the arm, shoulder or hand. The affected limbs could be weak, lack feeling or totally paralyzed. Fortunately, Epps palsy is a highly treatable condition and most children can fully recover from it. Physical therapy for Epps palsy is the most common treatment method. 
Richard Cote is a physiotherapist and passionate about giving hope to children with Epps palsy. Babies with Epps palsy, uh, most of them are referred from the medical doctor, the pediatrician, to, to start therapy. So after two weeks, the baby comes with a mother who is a physiotherapist, and then we assess the baby and see to the extent of the level of um, impairment of the condition. Richard is excited. His clients respond well to physiotherapy. A baby has undergone about a month of therapy, but he came with two, where there was, if you, if you observe, there, there's some wrist drop in the hand, it was two. So, and he has, his hand was actually very little movement in the hand. But now he's supposed to lift their hands up and then down. Some of the parents who bring their children for physiotherapy at the Princess Marie Louis Children's Hospital are happy about changes in their children and are encouraging parents with such children to see physiotherapists. Honestly speaking, when the boy was delivered and the mother came home on Saturday, he couldn't lift the hand at all. It was idle. But we thank God that. Today, as I'm talking to you now, the boy can raise the left hand. He can even crawl with the left hand. Initially, my baby couldn't move his hand. Now he can move it. Charity Mustafa is a pediatric physiotherapist. How long these children stay with us depends on the severity of the condition. There are some of them, just when they, they start crawling, you can see that the children are very functional with their hands. So once they are crawling and we are satisfied that this child is crawling on all fours, then we discharge. Richard Kote is, however, worried awareness about Epps palsy is slow. It's on a low note. So we are trying with my colleagues and my senior colleagues yes, to bring it out for the public to be aware the more. It's created an NGO to help children with Epps palsy. The physiotherapy unit of the Princess Marie Louis Children's Hospital in Accra records five new cases weekly and 20 new cases every month. On average, 20 old cases are recorded every week, making 80 old cases a month. Up next this mission. This is Manuel Donko and I'm reporting from T Junction in La, right in front of the La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. The traffic light is working. About a week ago, I reported that it wasn't working and I don't know if it was fixed later on or not. It started working then, I think some few days afterwards, it stopped working. So the problem or the fault is um, intermittent. It works for some time and then it stops. Then it starts working again. So I um, implore those who are responsible to take um, immediate action. The route is a busy one. That was the MTN video report. So you're still watching Media Life from the News Hub. We have more news coming up shortly. Do stay with us. In more news this afternoon, residents of Mantiwari in the Doma Central Municipality of the Bono region struggle to access health care. Construction of a community-based health planning and services CHIPS compound has been abandoned. Mantiwari is a farming community in the Doma Central Municipality of the Bono region. Residents say their town has been neglected by both past and present government in the delivery of social amenities. Access to health care is a major challenge. Patients, including expectant mothers, trek about 8 kilometers to access care at Abuabo Norma 2. Due to this, most pregnant women do not attend antenatal clinic because of the journey they would have to cover. Mm -hmm. 
Residents say nurses from the nearest health facility visit the community monthly to undertake child welfare clinic activities only. Apart from rain, I'm on my beam. To just a while and a while, to be crab, I shall tell and say, Black, that say, I be crowned to me. This has been the norm for some time now. As the cheapest means of transport, motorbikes are not regular, residents have to trek. Efia Hanna and her colleagues were returning from clinic around 1 p.m. after a long wait without any vehicle to transport them home. The Doma Central Municipal Assembly four years ago commenced its construction of a community-based health planning and services compound to provide primary health care to the people. The project, however, stalled after roofing and plastering works were done. The project, which is about 80% complete, has been left in the bush. Residents believe completion of the project is crucial to their survival. Municipal Chief Executive Drisa Watara said the contractor has no reason for abandoning the site. The Mantiwari Chips Compound is a project that we inherited um, ever since I assume office. So we've honored not less than two certificates from the, for the contractor. So he doesn't have any reason to you know, leave site. We expect him to go back and then finish the, the project for us. For us, what the previous administration started still belongs to the good people of Doma. The money does not belong to anybody. It's public funds. So what we are doing is that uh, all the inherited projects, we are trying hard to complete them. He indicated Mantiwari as one of the communities that has benefited from the Assembly social intervention programs. Visa Watara is confident of addressing the health needs of the people towards the attainment of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 3, which targets ensuring access to quality health care for all by 2030. The Doma Central Municipality, the building accommodation kindergarten pupils of the Chichire Basic School is near collapse. Stanley Nibler reports this is putting the lives of pupils and teachers at risk. Over 200 people from eight dispersed communities are enrolled at the Chichere Basic School. Primary one to six pupils study in a decent classroom constructed by the Municipal Assembly less than a decade ago. However, the building has started deteriorating. There are defects in all the classrooms. Fire. Kindergarten pupils are confined in a match structure. Already, the structure has had portions of its roof ripped off. Most of the wood supporting the structure have been eaten by termites. This puts the lives of teachers and pupils in danger, affecting teaching and learning in the process. The Parents Teacher Association put up the structure to accommodate the growing population of the school. It is long term value that uh, the government should have come in to build the permanent structure for us. So if it is um, windy, you have to close the children to go home because of the, the, the search of the um, block. The state of the building residency has reduced the school's enrollment. We are moving from village to village to convince them that uh, sooner or later the government will come and put up uh, a new search for us so they should bring them to the school. And even we, we started with a small feeding program which is helping them. We were managing the, the internally generated funds to uh, retain the st uh, students in the school. Aside the deplorable state of the school building, furniture in the school is inadequate. A broken bench serves the pupils. The junior high school also has a similar problem. The community said it is willing to support the school but lacks the funds. Municipal Chief Executive for Doma Centra, Drisa Watara, said funding remains a major challenge to the provision of infrastructure in the municipality. We have so many cases, you know, in the municipality, but in all of this, um, it's a challenge. But we are doing our bit to make sure that we make life comfortable for our people. So it's not only Chichi Re. Of course, um, if you get the funding, why not? We'll go there to work for our people. That's what we are looking forward to, you know, doing. The assembly has, however, provided teachers with a bungalow, hoping to secure funds to address the remaining challenges. 
the Chichere School, like others, would require stakeholders' commitment to address its challenges. Let's now go to the Volta region where management and pupils of the Abutia Batapo Basic School in the whole West District have been presented with 80 decks. This was after TV3 reported about inadequate facilities of the school, a report by Joseph Armstrong. On Sunday, June 2nd this year, TV3 reported about the educational challenges facing the Abutia Batapo Basic School in the whole West District of the Volta region. A six-unit classroom block at Abutia Betekpo Basic School looks so attractive from outside, but the inside is empty with no chairs and tables for the pupils. Nesby pupils have to carry their own chairs from home and trek several miles to reach their school. Those who cannot afford the chairs sit on the bare floor. Pupils who sit on the bare floor to steady use their hands as support to prevent their uniforms from getting dirty. The school also has no dining hall. During break time, pupils sit on the bare floor to eat. Two months after the report, a group called Pencils of Promise, with support from the MP of the area, Emmanuel Kwesi Bedra, have donated 80 decks to the school. Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Education Service in the whole West District, Frank Kokoti, received the decks on behalf of the school. In fact, their quick response, I'm sure, will forever remain history in the minds of these pupils. And so we just want to express our thanksgiving to TV3 to for coming to actually uh, capture this and make it a reality. We are most grateful to you. Head teacher of the school, Ernest Aju, also expressed gratitude to TV3. My appreciation goes to Pencils of Promise through the effort of the Honorable MP Bejra. And we are also grateful to TV3 that has brought this to fruition for us. But still, we need some more assistance in terms of infrastructure, the school block, the KG, we don't have any block, school block for the KG and the GHS. Some of the peoples also expressed gratitude. Three of more people sit on one desk. We didn't have desk to sit on it. So they brought some of the desk. We are happy. I feel happy. Because we don't have this, so if they bring it, I fall up. Joseph Armstrong, TV3, with our region. Let's go to the OT region, where school health and other interventions by World Vision are changing lives and academic status among children in Baritbari, a farming community in the Krachi East Municipality. While academic performance has improved from below 20% to 75%, parents have improved income from alternative livelihood programs. A report by Peter Kwao Adato. The 15-year intervention by World Vision in the Krachi East Municipality has improved lives in some communities. Access to potable water, sanitation and hygiene, health care, education and alternative livelihood, among others, has been improved. One of such beneficiary communities is Kbarikbari, a farming community on the Dambai Bando Trunk Road. Prior to the interventions, access to portable water, sanitation and hygiene as well as health care were major challenges. In education, the World Vision School Health and Reading Clubs engaged children after school hours and on holidays to learn. Translated into a papuki by Joseph Aukudankwa, Kofi Frimpong, Sasubako, Rutaibwa. At the health club, members learn about personal hygiene, social science, among others. A member of the school health club shared his experience and benefits of the program. I, the time that I didn't join the club, I don't know how to manage my menstruation. If I get my menstruation, I'll be assumed that I'm sick, so I'll not come to school. But now I've joined the class, I now know how to manage my menstruation and come to school. The extra school camp meeting has exposed the children to knowledge and skills, which has improved not only their personal lives, but that of others in their communities. Even in a month, I've been visiting the hospital twice, because I don't know how to maintain myself always, I become ill. But now, I've stayed for one full year, I haven't visited the hospital yet. 
my health insurance card is there freely. I'm not using it. And I don't go to the uh, medical sellers to buy drugs because I'm not ill. And always I'm fit. The intervention has thus made school appealing to children. So it has gone a long way to affect our academic performance. So we were not able to perform well as we are expected to perform. We fail our examination and even classwork. It's only homework that we can give to somebody to do it for us and we will pass that one. So through that many children also drop out from school. A parent, Kezi Adola, recounted some benefits of World Vision intervention programs. Because of this, the way they have been going to this uh, reading camp and co, like even small, small children in the town or in the uh, community can even speak at public. And even you could see that through this thing, even their academic performance too is now better. Additionally, a number of people from beneficiary communities have been trained in various skills to manage intervention facilities even long after the benefactor has left the area. You're watching Media Live from the News Hub. We have business news coming up shortly. Just stay with us. up in business this afternoon car power ship ghana says it is decommissioning its 470 megawatts power ship at the tema fishing harbor the decommissioning is to enable the power ship to be relocated to second day the western region car power ship ghana says the relocation exercise will take 17 days beginning tuesday august 13. in this regard the power ship will be off the national grid the relocation of the power ship is to enable government save millions of dollars as the ship is expected to be used readily available natural gas from the Western Enclave. Ghana has moved up from grade D in 2016 to A in the macro fiscal forecasting of the public financial management system implementation at the launch of the 2018 Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability Report. Dr. Mohamed Sani Abdullahi noted the Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability Assessment Report provides the opportunity to identify gaps and close them. The Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability PIFA framework is intended to provide an integrated and harmonized approach for measuring and monitoring public financial management PFM performance progress. It also helps focus support on country-led PFM reform programs. At the launch of the Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability Performance Assessment Report, Chairperson of Public Services Commission, Dr. Janet Ampedufofi, said the public financial management is one of the fundamentals for the development of the country. It is my fervent hope that we use the report as a working document to achieve the targets set out in the country's PFM reform agenda. We should also use this as a learning opportunity to equip ourselves with additional knowledge to better understand and achieve our set fiscal targets. The Director General of the National Development Planning Commission, NDPC, Dr. Grace Ifuabediakun, observed the government has prioritized the country's public financial management strategy. The implementation of the international public sector accounting standards to enhance the reporting of public finances and the deepening of implementation of the human resource management information system so as to enhance the management of our wage bill. Deputy Head of Mission and Head of Corporation at the Embassy of Switzerland, Matthias Feldman, noted the public financial management system is critical in the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. It helps to shed light on the changes that have taken place in Ghana's PFM system over the past couple of years, both the positive ones and maybe also some negative ones. 
and it helps to identify the remaining gaps and weaknesses and those areas that need further improvements. Dr. Muhammad Abdullahi is the project director of Public Financial Management Reform Project. He outlined the three outcomes of the project. How is external audit doing? And again, how are we managing our revenues, our expenditures, our debts, our assets, our procurement, our internal audit? For macro fiscal and the way we do our fiscal forecasting and strategy, Ghana has moved from a D in 2006 to a B. And that's it for the latest in the world of business. Come And the 2019 edition of Media General's Ghana's Most Beautiful has been launched in the Ashanti Regional Capital of Kumasi. The most watched reality pageant show in the country will see 16 contestants competing for the coveted crown for 2019. <laughs> Cultures from across Ghana fused in Kumase as the season 13 of TV3's flagship reality show, Ghana's Most Beautiful, was launched. In a culturally characterized environment, the ladies were outdoored to the public in a grand style, taking turns to be introduced, each contestant flanked by a cultural troupe in traditional dances, mounted the stage to pay homage to traditional leaders and other dignitaries present. <laughs> The traditionally endowed pageant has over the years brought into view the significance and the need to celebrate the rich Ghanaian cultural heritage and tradition. Sixteen contestants were outdoored to symbolize the official kickstarts of the 2019 show. Contestants will spend the next 13 weeks doing research and educating Ghanaians on the customs and traditions of their regions and Ghana at large. GMB 2019, black and proud. My two gentlemen and the lady, they are doing the Agbaja dance to melodious Ewe music. And that's it for Medi Life. Thanks so much for your time. I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good afternoon.